Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a horse forelock in pastels and the tips and techniques that I share in this video can also be transferred when drawing their mane. Now the first thing that I want to focus on here is using my pastel pencils to get a good base foundation in place. All I'm doing here is mapping in where my lights and my darks are. Now before I go into that too much more, what I want to talk about here is the importance of working with what is behind an element first. So now I'm having to actually mapping the base foundation of the rest of the face just along this top area of the forehead because the long details of the forelock is also going to overlap this area of the face. If I get too carried away and continue to work on the forelock, I'm then going to have to draw around all of those details when I come to work on the face. Now that really does take so much longer and it can actually be quite stressful. So I like to get all of my base foundation in place that's underneath those longer hairs and then I know I can just overlap all of those details on top. So when you're working on elements or fur and hair textures like this that are longer, it is important to make sure that you're paying attention to what it overlaps and then get those areas that are underneath drawn in first. Now this base foundation, as I've said, it's just about mapping in the lights and the darks, but I am also focusing on the way that the hair travels. So you'll see that I'm not using straight lines, I'm making sure that everything is still curved. It's following the structure of the head underneath. The way that the long hair comes between the ears, it drapes over the skull and then lays on the flatter surface of the face. If I don't get the angle of my pencil strokes right here, I will potentially change the way that the top of the head looks. Now that can make for a pet portrait, it won't resemble as much like that animal as it should. Now here, in the real time version that is available on Patreon, I really do explain why to pick specific pencils. This is a question that I get asked an awful lot, as well as how to use those pencils to create long, fine lines. Now you can see here with this real time clip how important it is to use light pressure when you're working on any kind of hair that's really fine. Now the lighter the pressure, the thinner the line is going to be. It doesn't matter which brand of pencil you're using, but the pressure of the pencil is one of the most important techniques to get right. Now as well as good pencil technique, the layering process here is very important. Now I've already briefly spoken about that at the beginning of this video, but the layers that we're building up here are all going to be about the layers of subtlety. We do not want to be jumping to using our lightest pencils on top of our darker base layer. Now for this, I have used the pastel pencils from start to finish. I did use pan pastels for my background, but for the horse itself, all of this was done with the pencils. Now, of course, for your base foundation, you could use pan pastels or your soft pastel sticks. I just used for this instance my pencils so I could show my patron members that you don't have to have all of the pastel supplies in order to create photorealistic work. The pencils absolutely can do that for you. Now, going back to the layers here, where I'm building up my layers gradually, I'm focusing on the mid-tones. I don't want to be jumping to those brightest highlights too early on because I'm going to end up making that hair look very flat. Now another aspect that's really important, and I think it's very easy to get this wrong when working with longer hair, is you want to be making sure that the length of that hair is correct. So for that brief moment there, I was just having a look at my reference photo and lining it up where some of those hairs should finish. Now in this situation, it finished roughly at the base lower point of the left eye. So there, I was just making sure that I had that in mind and know exactly where I should finish my pencil strokes. Now when it comes to the very longer parts of the hairs, the ends of those details, we want to be making sure that they don't have that straight, harsh edge appearance. Now you also don't want them to look like spaghetti, so you don't want to be moving your hand in random squiggly movements because you're going to end up with something that doesn't look realistic. Now I'm not saying that I want to be getting every single curve of the hair right, but I do want to be making sure that I've got the overall texture and the direction of that hair travelling in the right way. Another really important aspect to pay attention to when you're creating these details is you want variation. You don't want each of those pencil strokes to look the same because you'll end up with fur that looks fake and artificial. Now it's at this stage where I'm happy with all of the layers that I've built up until this point that I can now start using my lighter pencils, reinforcing more of those brighter highlights. Now one quick tip, if you are working with your brightest pencils and you don't feel like they're bright enough, 
that's an indication that your layer underneath isn't dark enough. So the contrast here plays a very important role in building up that depth, especially when working with this longer, thicker hair. And of course, everything that I've mentioned in this tutorial is all covered thoroughly in the real-time version on Patreon. You get the reference photo, line art and full material list. If that's of interest or any of my other step-by-step -step tutorials, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Here's a photo of my finished drawing and if this video was useful I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week so if you would like to get notified of that content then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I'm going to upload another video next week but as always thank you so much for watching.